Well, first of all, Aidan, nice to have a little chat with you. Nice to give us your time and talk us through how it's all going for you. I just want to, first of all, if you can, just explain your role to, to, our, to our viewers and, and listeners of what you're actually, you know, in charge of. Yeah, so uh, I took over from the current manager, Dave Hartel, as academy manager, uh, pretty much the week that, that Dave took over as as first team manager. So uh, been academy manager for three years now. So my sort of day to day is overseeing various aspects of the of the academy, the different departments, whether that be you know the coaches alongside the head of coaching, uh, you know the physios, the sports scientists, recruitment, education. So yeah, it's a, it's quite a wide ranging uh, job, which I enjoy. So uh, yeah, all good. You must be delighted as well that you, you say you're there three years now to see the progress of uh, players coming into the first team level. Yeah, I mean that that's obviously the remit of our academy. You know, it's to provide players to go to the first team and ultimately beyond. Uh, so we've we've done we've done that very well uh, before my time as well, but. Obviously, I've sort of helped carry on that, that trend, if you like, and we've, we've, we've seen very good numbers, you know, including a couple of 11s, uh, you know, a few years back, uh, just before my time, I've happened, but you know, we've consistently getting six, seven, eight players into the first team, which uh, is, is going to be hopefully the case when, we, when we, reach, we return, whenever that may be. Well, you're a local boy, and you know all about the football club as well, but there are a lot of coaches at the football club who've got a long association, played for the club, been around the club a long time. How big of a, a positive is that to have them type of people in your setup? It, it's massive, Gray. I mean, you know, as you say, we've got staff, you know, the likes of Lee Bell, Kenny Lunt, Alex Morris, and, and others who've who've been there and done it, uh, have come through the system. They they know what it takes to be, you know, in most in most places, place, uh, most cases, a crew crew player. But I think they understand the philosophy and the culture of the club, you know, what it, what uh, training training session looks like. You know the detail it needs to go into the technical aspects of training. Uh, as I say, because they they've done it when they were children and growing through the and coming through the, the ranks. So it's vital that we have that continuity of staff. Uh, not not all staff. I think it's good to have a little blend of what we class as the outside. Uh, I include myself in that. You know, I, I was brought up at another club not too far away. Uh, you but, can't mention them. You can't mention them. Hey, don't worry. Yeah, they, they play in red and white stripes. Uh, yeah, so I, I came to Stoke uh, ultimately till I got released at the age of 20, 21. Uh, but having seen it from another club, you know, and, and coming over to Crew a few years back, quite a long time ago, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's obvious that how how much coaching is valued at this football club, and may that continue. Yeah, we'll talk more about that and other aspects in a, in a few minutes' time. But let's get to the more serious side of it all now, where we are today and, and what's going on. How are you actually coping with it all, the lockdown? It's something that as a football coach or a football manager has never, ever had to deal with before. And you're at the welfare of the lads, you know, from six to probably 16 years of age. That's right. I mean, it's obviously unprecedented times for everybody involved and you know it's I think this is week seven of, of the lockdown uh, so it's been a long long period and I'm sure there's a few more weeks to come so initially when when the news broke that it, it was looking like there was going to be a lockdown period we we planned we planned ahead a little bit you know it was it was mid-march and we we quickly established online videos and and information to be sent out to players which you know we knew was going to be the while uh, so we were quite prepared I think it's become more difficult as time is ticking on because there's no end date to it I know there's lots of lots of talk and you, you can read a different paper and get a different date when football may or may return but the problem we're having is is trying to plan as I say without exactly knowing what we're planning for you know there's going to be clearly a new normal uh, and it's just trying to plan as normal as we can, and obviously having to tweak that for when we do return, uh, and, and as you say, checking in on the welfare of players and staff has become, as time has grown, for me, that's become paramount. You know, we've, we've got lots of technical videos we've sent out, technical, uh, educational, but I think now for me, the sort of mental health and well-being of, of players and staff 
as time ticks on is, is paramount to me. So we, that's something I'm conscious of. We know, and, and uh, you know, I've been there many, many years and seen it all develop from, from the Dario early days of what academy football, academy coaching means to a club like Crowley And it's been superb that the board of directors led by John Bowler and, and fellow directors have financially backed the crew Alexander Academy. At this current time, is that a worry, Aidan, you know, financially of, of what can happen in the future? I think clearly football in general, there's, there's a worry financially. You know, I, I, I'm not too involved in the financial uh, aspects of the football club. Obviously, I'm aware of the, of the uh, potential issues that are going to be, as I say, involved in football in general. Uh, I think my, my role is, you know, there's a phrase that we use with players is control the controllables. And, and that's something that, that we've been given, you know, I'm in regular contact with Charles, Charles Grant, you know, he rings me, you know, daily, you know, uh, you know at least three, four, five times a week. And he's, his message to me is just, just keep checking in on the staff, checking on the players, keep planning. Uh, but obviously that is in, in the foremost of our minds that how, how football is going to be impacted by this financially, uh, you know, not just the, the clubs, but the Premier League, uh, you know, obviously there's lots of money at that end of the game. So I'm just constantly re reviewing and, and checking on how things are looking in terms of watching news, reading things. And as I say, controlling the controllables, that, you know, whatever happens is out of, my, out of my hands, certainly. So I'm just kind of trying to keep on top of things as best as I can. It is a complete change. There's no doubt about that. When it does restart, we, it's football or anything to do with running the country, whatever you're involved in, it's going to be a different type of what we've been known, you know, probably seven or eight weeks ago. When it does restart, would you say football and Crew Alexander are facing probably the biggest challenge that they've ever had to do? And for you, your particular area, you've got a successful model. So, is that the big challenge to, to maintain that successful model? It is certainly going to be a big challenge, yes. You know, I'm, I'm conscious of when football does return, there may be clubs who are going to be operating with smaller squads. There could be more players out of work, effectively, who are looking for, for, for jobs. So, you know, are our clubs going to be looking for young players at our level, you know, at our academy, or are they going to be taking a hit on someone who's out of work, you know, who, who hasn't got a club? So there's all there's all those areas to consider. I think, as well as uh, from a, a youth football point of view, you know, there's certainly going to be a new, as I said earlier, a new normal. You know, and it's 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 how that's going to look initially. So returning to any sense of full time training for our academy players is going to be a challenge, uh, and is going to be certainly rolled out over a period of time. You know, there's obviously social distance. Uh, to be aware of how that's going to look in football because clearly you can't socially distance within a, a game of football and training sessions. So it, lots of hurdles we're going to face uh, and I'm sure hopefully you know, we'll be in a position to be able to do that. But to answer your question, it's certainly going to be a challenge. One thing you've got to try and do is make it a positive because what you have got is you are renowned for producing real quality, good young players. Most of them make our first team. Some of them go through the back door and go somewhere else and make their first team. That can work in your favour, perhaps. You've mentioned that just a moment ago about the other clubs could be looking to bring younger players and get into the younger player type of scenario. But you've got a march on them, haven't you? And you've got something that you could probably sell to them. We have, yes. I mean, you know, obviously, as you say, we've got a very successful model, which won't change. You know, you know we're, we're continually producing footballers, which is what we need to do. We, we've got lots of players in our system who are coming through, in my opinion. You know, we've, we've got some age groups who are more talented in terms of numbers, uh, but there's certainly a, a steady line of players who are going to come through. So hopefully, as you say, you know, they get their opportunity here at Crew. We know that, you know, if they're good enough at 16, 17, 18, the manager, as, as you've seen, will, will give them the opportunity. And the majority of them thrive and, and hopefully move on. So... That, that model won't change, and, and as I say, that you know, just are are showing an interest in our players currently down the lower age groups as well. It's not just when they're in the first team. We we're, we're consistently uh, having to, I say, fight off you know approaches from bigger clubs because we don't mm -hmm. want them to leave. 
Uh, so that, that hopefully won't change. Uh, and our, our job or my job is to keep convincing our current players to stay with us and, and uh, get their reward ultimately when they, they do move on from food. So that, that's what does happen. Uh, you know, that, and that's happened in the past and that needs to happen in the future. So that won't change. I with the manager quite regularly through, through Zoom and, and put it out on the official website over these last few, few weeks. It, obviously, because the players are furloughed, they can't do any work, but he can keep in touch with them mentally and physically to chat to them. Are you doing the same? And, and, and how are you finding it? Because it, it must be very, very difficult if you're a very you know, young schoolboy been used to going down to the academy, training two or three times a week, and having your games on the Saturday and the Sundays uh, 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 of when the fixtures are on it must be very, very hard. That so, how, how, what, what are you gauging when you, with your feedback? Yeah, it's it's it, as you say, it's massively important. I think anyone involved in football, we've all been there from a young age. You, you get used to a structure throughout the week. That's that's a word I'm, I'm hearing a lot. Speaking to people involved in the game, you're used to training, as you say, two, three, four times a week. Games are always on a Saturday or Sunday. You know, you get told where to be and where not to be, and it becomes it becomes your life. And effectively, that's been taken away from a football perspective. Uh, you know, we're talking about young players who not just have had football taken away; they've had school. They're no longer to play out with friends or, or communicate socially with the friends. So it, it's a massive change, and one we'll look back on hopefully in years years to come and think, you know, it's a, it's a really difficult time. So what we did at the very start. Because it was new, you know, we were we were really keen on, on getting loads of stuff out to our players because we knew they'd be missing football. So it was all driven along, as I said earlier, technical videos, physical activities they could be doing. Uh, the longer that's gone on, I, I'm really conscious of, of that also happening from a school perspective. So these boys were talking about, and some are only nine, they're getting loads of stuff from us, uh, loads of stuff from school, you know, on top of having to deal with this situation, as I said, not being able to see the friends. There's a lot going on in a young person's mm. life. So I think now we've, we sort of, we've, we've tailored it back a little bit. We, we're in communication through, with the parents, of course, through uh, email and phone calls uh, every couple of weeks. But we're just, we're just checking in on, on how they're doing. You know, there's not an emphasis on, has he done his work in the garden or the football? It's just, how is he doing? Is he okay? Is there anything we can do? Just, just being aware of their well-being, really, because football will return, and the good players we've got will still be good players, you know. And we just got to be there when, when things do, do return, and just keep that communication uh, platform open that parents can contact us if there is a problem. And we've not had any. I have to say that feedback from parents has been good. You know, we've, we've, we've done what we can do. We've, as I say, we've arranged uh, Zoom meetings with players. Uh, first team players, uh, the manager's been on Zoom play, Zoom meetings with the young players as well, and you know it's it's just little things like that which I think are very important just to make the players aware that we haven't forgotten them, far from it, uh, and that that's something we're going to continue doing over the coming weeks. You know, returning with my last question after we just have a little chat in the moment about the next subject, but the, the last question we're going to put to you is, how do you feel for the future for crew? But just returning to You've talked about you being the head of the academy a few weeks ago. Of course, James College took his job at Wolverhampton Wanderers and you appointed Will Ryder, who's well known in this local area, of course, with his involvement in football clubs as the head of coaching. Can you tell us a little bit about that role and, and what, you, what you want to see come from Will? Yeah, so Will, Will's come in at clearly a difficult time. You know, uh, Will's first day in the, in, the, in the role was around about, I think it was the 16th of March, which was the day that we actually shut the academy. So you've got the head of coaching coming in with all these ideas and, and plans and, you know, as I say, bang, the academy's closed. So difficult times. However, I have to say uh, the working relationship we've started to develop has been really good. You know, Will's uh, he's a good, honest guy. He's, he's coming in with ideas, you know, and part of Part of Will's remit is to not not drastically change what we're doing because we've got a product that we think we think works, and he's fully aware of that. But he's also got little ideas that may be able to improve us as an academy. As I, as I alluded to at the start, Will's come in from uh, having experience at different clubs, so we've got new ideas and can put a new twist on things. But as I say, it'll be it'll be a slow process. You know, we won't we won't be changing what we do, and. Uh, 
as I say, it's just a case at the moment for Will of, of planning things like syllabuses uh, and coaching sessions and how, how things are going to look when they do return. Obviously, that, that's difficult to know when. But uh, I have to say, Will, Will's uh, come in and he's, he's settled in as best as can be expected. You know, bearing in mind he hasn't seen any of our players in games or sessions, uh, hasn't really had a chance to mix with the staff uh, other than Zoom meetings and WhatsApp groups, which we're obviously communicating through. So it's been really challenging for Will, but he's stepped up and he's, he's been brilliant, I have to say, and I, I'm, uh, I've got high hopes that he's going to add real value to the academy. Well, as we know, it is tough times, Aidan. Just two things to, to finish off. For your young hopefuls that you've got at your football club, they've had to stop doing what they love and we all love, is either being involved or playing football. What's your message to them and how do you see the future for Corrales? How do you rate it? Because you're, you're right in the firing line. You're, you're at the hub of it because you're getting the 60s to 16 years of age that hopefully one day you'll see running out of that tunnel at Gresty Road. That's right. I mean, first of all, my message to the players is, is just obviously stay strong, you know, keep, keep focusing on your well-being. And obviously, you know, football, football will take care of itself. You know, the, the young boys we're talking about have got years to develop. You know, this, this is a snapshot of time which we'll all look back on as obviously been a difficult time, as I've said. But, you know, I, I'm keen on emphasising that they can keep practising on things at home if they can. You know, we won't be checking in on them if they're doing it, but just keep working hard. Uh, and ultimately, when, when we do return back, you know, as I say, we've got lots of plans, we've got lots of new ideas, fresh ideas, and, and things will, well, you know, things will get back to normal, you know, and it's going to take a while, but things, things will be fine. And uh, they're certainly in the right club for player development. You know, that, that hasn't changed, that won't change, which, you know, answering your other question is, uh, I see the future at Crew Alex. Right, still, you know, as I say, this is a difficult time, but we'll be, we'll be uh, gearing up to getting back. Uh, I imagine initially on a part-time basis in terms of the players slowly returning back to what is what we class as full-time training for the school boys, you know, three, four times a week. But nothing's going to change, you know, the, the philosophy of the club isn't going to change. You know, as I say, our remit as academy staff is to keep producing footballers to be to be uh, playing in our first team. So that's not going to change. And uh, hopefully, you know, we, we get an end to the season uh, in terms of League Two season, which, you know, we're not not really discussed. But hopefully we'll be talking about when we do return, school boys, we'll be in League One as opposed to League Two. You know, however that works out, hopefully there's an end of season process that needs to be. Hopefully when that is, we can, we can pick up where we left off and remain top of the league. And, they say get promoted. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to remain positive, you know, and that's the message we're getting out to the staff and the players and the parents that I say, hold on in there, it'll be okay. And uh, when we return, we'll, we'll carry on where we left off.